Hello and welcome to Papa Soup Creative. Today I'm going to show you how I made this design using alternating tiled clones in color all in Inkscape. I use 0.48 and I have a Mac. But uh, we'll start here. Just get rid of this. What I did was I started with drawing a star. Now when you do this you will find that depending on the size of what you draw it will affect your pattern but I will show you how you can adjust that when we get to the end. So I drew a star and then I drew a, a circle. Again the distance between these two will also make a difference in how your pattern turns out. But maybe we'll make the star just a little bit bigger. Okay, now, really important to get color is that the fill is unset. So you select the one that's got a fill. They might both have a fill hold down your right, right mouse button and unset the fill and that will make it black. Yeah, that one's got a, that fill is unset, so that's because I've been doing this for a while. Select them both and do a path union. Now we're going to edit clones create tiled clones. And here's our tiled clone uh, panel. I want, and this is a trial and error thing that I kept changing until I got this setting. Ten rows by five columns. Then I did shift and again, another, just by poking buttons and playing around and seeing the result, I came up with 75% shift per columns and rows. Scale I didn't do anything about, rotation I didn't do anything about, blur I didn't, but color. You can set this color at anything. It didn't seem to make any difference for what we were doing. But I played around with hue and saturation. Again, these were arbitrary numbers. But what I did find is that I got more colors if I set the color randomizing at 50%. Sorry, I cannot tell you what that does, I just see things and I either understand them or I don't and if I don't understand it but it works, I leave it at that. Uh, the other important thing is you want to alternate rows and columns. So that's it. Do create and voila! Now you can change uh, a lot of things here. Uh, you can change the rows and columns. If I change this to 10 and hit create again, it changes the shape. So, so let's go back to 5. So long as your original item is still selected, you can keep doing that and doing it and doing it all day long. So we want to get rid of this because all of these others are clones of it and if we delete this one everything will become a path. Nope, it didn't because I so, let's edit and do the delete. There. 
there's the clone. Now I've really screwed this up. So what I'm going to do, because mistakes are teaching moments, I'm going to select them all. I'm going to go up here to cut the selected clone links to the original, turning them into paths. Okay, so now we have clones. I mean, we don't have clones, we have paths. Jeez. Now, I want to keep them together so they don't, I don't lose my shape. And your first instinct, if you're an Inkscape user, is to combine them or to do a path union. If you do that, the color goes away. It's another one of those things I have no idea why. I just know it is. So I select all of them and do an object group. So now I have a group. I actually have my pattern. Uh, it's 8 by 7, uh, which works for me because I do cards. But you can uh, make this, say, 11. So you get that shape. So you can adjust the shape somewhat. <coughs> If I make it 11 by 11 ish so the the nice thing about this is you can fool around with it until you get what you want that's pretty much the whole thing what I do because I have a Mac and it's easy for me I do a screen capture of this image. So I just have a little bit uh, of white around it uh, and then I take it into Photoshop but uh, you can also print from Inkscape. I really can't help you with the printing part just to say you can do a file make bitmap copy you can do a file export bitmap however works for you and your printer and uh, you'll learn that pretty quickly going around uh, trying this please do try it uh, there'll be more information on my blog at papasucreative.blogspot.com thanks for being here bye